Before we get into today's session and turn this over to Ahmed, I first just want to remind everybody of what Pine Environmental does. Pine's expertise is focused on environmental monitoring, be it air, water, or soil, non-destructive testing, remote visual inspection, continuous emissions monitoring, or the supply of field and safety equipment. To be able to support our clients, we have well over 100 distribution agreements with various uh, environmental non-destructive testing and remote and visual companies. As you can see, we just have a sample of a few of them up here, but there are many, many more. That being said, the reason we're here today is to discuss bladder pump best practices. So I'm going to turn it over to Ahmed Mahmoud today. He's one of our technicians in the office. He's a mechanical engineer. And what we're hoping to be able to do is answer these questions. What is a bladder pump? When should a bladder pump be used? What are the benefits of a bladder pump? How do I actually set the bladder pump up and do some troubleshooting on it? How do I know if the bladder has failed? And ultimately, at the end of the day, should I have other bladders with me? And if so, how many should I have? So with that, I'm going to turn it over to the Ahmed. Take it away. So uh, why people use a bladder pump? Well, bladder pump mainly primarily used uh, uh, here in uh, in those applications here uh, in Edmonton. Uh, they use it for groundwater sampling and uh, for low flow application ground groundwater sampling and purging as well. So uh, as you can see, the construction of the bladder pump itself, it's constructed. This bladder pump is uh, from QED manufacturer, so it's made from uh, uh, 303 uh, grade stainless steel that is very durable and actually this uh, steel protects uh, against chloride and any groundwater chemicals that could be there. Uh, so it's very durable. It also has a housing that encloses the flexible ladder, which is uh, in this case this one here. As you can see, uh, this one is made from uh, PTFE or polyethylene just to ensure durability and sample integrity. So this the one we have here to show you guys. It's uh, it's the 1.75 inch size. It comes in different sizes. Uh, we actually carry a smaller one to 0.75 inch as well. Uh, but for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to show you the 1.75 inch, which is the most common size that we have. Uh, you can get those ones. Uh, as I said, this one is the sample pro from QED, but also uh, we get it also from Solinus and other manufacturers as well. So why people use bladder pump? Well, first of all, as you can see, it, it really has an ease of operations, very easy to operate. And considering the size, uh, it's really portable, right? And it's actually, uh, it's just a little bit uh, less than two kilograms uh, in weight. Uh, so it's really handy and, and it's not too heavy. Uh, it also has different sizes, so you can, uh, you can actually fit uh, almost all wells that we have here. And uh, I'm going to show you later on how to build it. So it's easy to build and disassemble. And also because this one has a bladder pump, so it has less minimal uh, agitated, and, uh, agitated sample. So your sample that you bring back to the surface is less agitated uh, uh, other, uh, with this type of pump, which is really good. And this pump is actually, it's only, as you can see, it's only 14.5 inch long. So that's around 38 centimeters long. So this, uh, it can easily fit inside a bucket. Uh, when you are on site, when you, if you want to clean it or or disassemble it or uh, swap up, uh, swap out uh, the bladders. Uh, so uh, this actually you can use, uh, you can clean it on site in a bucket using Alconox, which is really uh, effective detergent and gives you the best results to avoid any cross contamination. Uh, so we also provide a complimentary uh, cleaning kit with brushes uh, for those who wants to uh, uh, clean the pump on site. Uh, this one, as you can see here, we have uh, individual pieces we can, I'm going to show you actually, we can, uh, you can get a kit from us or you can uh, buy individual pieces just like you see on the table here. You can request that as well. Uh, so very uh, durable pump, and it goes all the way down to 250 uh, feet, uh, depending on your application. You can use that. So let's say about the system components. So how do you set up uh, this uh, pump uh, in the field, right? So obviously it contains 
The setup on the field contains uh, the bladder pump right here, contains a compressor, uh, a controller, and a compressor. Uh, in this case, we're using the MP50 uh, from uh, a QED, which is actually, it's a really good and durable and very recommended to use. Uh, it's a fan cool, it's very prominent, and uh, it's, it's, it's very, does the job uh, correctly. And uh, also, for to operate the compressor, you need a deep cycle uh, marine battery is recommended, uh, which is, uh, you can use a smaller one, but it's highly recommended to use a deep cycle, uh, 12 volt deep, bat uh, deep cycle battery. It's just like the battery in your car. So uh, so we, we send that one out also uh, to, uh, to activate and operate the controllers and the compressor. So of course, uh, with that in mind, you, we have the tubing here as well. So we have two tubings. We have one for the airline and one for the water line. So we're using uh, the core inch at three eight, core inch by three eight for the water side, and for the air side, we're using the 0.17 by a core inch uh, for the air, uh, tubing for the air side. So this is a. Uh, uh, low density tubing, but you can also use uh, high density. We also carry high density tubing as well. Uh, if you're gonna, uh, depending on uh, how deep your well is, you can use high density just to avoid any kinking, to avoid any bending in your tubing, uh, which works best. So, uh, so now we get to the point where how does the bladder, uh, like how does it work, right? So, as I said before, the idea of the bladder pump is to uh, to bring uh, groundwater sampling all the way to the surface, right? So we're using the compressor uh, to inject uh, gas, or in this case, just air, into the bladder pump, and to be able to squeeze the, the bladder pump inside the housing, just to bring that water all the way back to the surface through the discharge line. All right, so, uh, the system uh, setup, just like I said, we're going to build the pump and I'm going to show you exactly how to build it. And uh, please let me know if I'm going uh, too fast. I can, we can always go back and double check because uh, uh, it's not, it's not really complicated, but I'm going to show you exactly what to do uh, and how to build it. So this is a fully assembled pump here. So I'll set this aside. And just pretend that we're building one uh, right from scratch. So this is uh, the housing where the bladder pump, where the bladder itself goes into. Components also we have here, as I'm, I'm showing you here, is uh, the top part of the pump itself. We have the cover. We have the plate here that holds the pump uh, when you're lowering down. And you can see here, uh, there's, uh, I put some, uh, uh, like a wire line. You can use a wire line. You can use a, a twine or you can use any, any durable uh, rope here just to hold uh, the pump while lowering the pump down hole. Because you don't want to, you don't want to rely only on holding the pump by the, the air line or the water line. So you don't lose it down hole. So it's just recommended to use that twine as, as a safety. So the components also for the bladder pump, we have the grab plate, which actually, as you, see, you can see from the design, it's, uh, it helps holding those tubings down. So when you pull up, uh, the air tubing or the water tubing it won't come off the pump itself. And we just have a, a number of different uh, O-rings here, different sizes. So different sizes go to different places. Uh, I'm going to show you in a minute here. Uh, so you got small size, and we have a uh, we have the screen for the inlet screen, and we also have the inlet port. This one, and that's for the water for the water line, right? So I'm going to show you exactly how to build one uh, from scratch. So first of all. Uh, we have the head, uh, the pump head here. 
So what we're going to do is, so we have two large size O rings. So we're just going to install those ones. But they have, we have two grooves here on the pump head. See, so we're going to install that annually just like so. We put it in, slide it all the way. So the first one is in. Now we're going to do the second one for the second part. For the top part here, same thing, you're going to slide this one in. And make sure it sits properly. So now we got the two O rings in. Next, we're going to uh, assemble the inlet, inlet port. So the inlet is, has actually a, a ball valve or a check valve, just like you guys see here. So this is the inlet. It has the mesh. That's where the water comes inside. That's where the water sample comes inside uh, from the well itself. So you just hold the ball, drop it in there. And this is the inlet side. So what we're going to do is grab one of those uh, this size O-rings and just slide the O-rings here, just like so. So it's all inside here, and this is where the mesh is going to go. So you hold the mesh. This is what prevents the, any contaminants or any solids from entering into your pump. You just hold it this way, and you just insert it here. Use your fingers to tuck it in, and it's good to go. So once we, once we do that, we already have the check valve or the ball inside right here. And you just have to push, push this one in. So you can actually hand push it this way with your thumb. Strong, like a, just give it a, a little bit of strength to make sure it sits properly, just like so. Or you can use, uh, if you have a, a wrench or something, you can just, like this one, if you have any uh, screwdriver or wrench, you can use it just to press the press the inlet port inside to make sure it's actually snug and fit. So now we're done that. Uh, 